this is problem number four. It's from the 2016 AP Calc AB exam. Uh, this is a non-calculator question here that deals with differential equations. And so they give us the differential equation right here. Uh, and that's really all they give us in the problem statement. And then in part A, they, they ask us to sketch a slope field for the differential equation at the six indicated points. Um, so all you're going to do to build that slope field is you're going to figure out what the slope of the tangent line to the solution curve is uh, at each of the ordered pairs that are indicated. So you're just going to plug each ordered pair into the derivative to generate that slope. You plug 0, 0 into this, and you get 0 divided by negative 1, which gives you a slope of 0. So sketch a line segment with a slope of 0. Uh, the rest of the slopes work out to be negative 1, negative 4, 4, 1, and 0. So you just want to make sure you have negative slopes at these locations, this one being significantly steeper than this one, uh, positive slopes at these locations with this positive slope being significantly steeper than that one. And that should do it for part A. Building the slope field shouldn't really be all that difficult. On the actual AP exam, you, you probably wouldn't want to list these slopes uh, right beside your ordered pairs there. I just kind of did that to kind of speed up the discussion of part A in the video here. Uh, in part B, it says that y equals f of x is our particular solution to the differential equation that has the initial condition when x is 2, the y value is 3. Write an equation for the tangent line to the graph of this solution curve at x equals 2 and then use that equation to approximate f of 2.1. So if we want the equation of a tangent line, we're going to need the slope of the tangent line. The point of tangency is 2 comma 3. So the slope of the tangent line at 2 comma 3 is going to be the value of the derivative at 2 comma 3. So you toss 3 in for your y that's sitting in that numerator, you square it, you toss 2 in for that x that's sitting in that denominator, and you end up with 3 squared over 1, you end up with 9 for your slope. So in point slope form, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We've got the equation of our tangent line right here. How are you going to use the equation of that line to approximate f of 2.1? Well, we're just going to use the y value from the line at this x to approximate the y value on the solution curve at the same x. So we're basically just going to put 2.1 into the x for the equation of the line, and we're going to generate the y value, and, and boom, there's our estimate. And so the one thing that you'll notice I did here is I added the, the 3 uh, from point slope form from the left-hand side that included the y to the right-hand side, so I've got plus 3 plus this remaining term with 2.1 in place of the x. And if you simplify that, which isn't necessarily required on the AP exam, this right here, this expression, if I could control the mouse, this expression right here would receive full credit. Uh, but if you simplify it, you get 3.9. In part C, they ask us to salt, find the particular solution that was described back in part B. So the same initial condition that was described back in part B, but now we actually want to determine what that solution curve is going to be. And so we're going to separate our variables in order to find this particular solution. And when you separate your variables, you can, you can basically use Leibniz notation here and, and kind of uh, treat this algebraically, multiply the right-hand side by dx, divide the left-hand side by y squared. Easy mistake to make uh, would be when you integrate this to think, hey, I've got 1 over y squared there. I'm doing an integral. It's going to be natural log of the absolute value of y squared. Definitely not the case. We would apply the power rule to this, move that y across the fraction bar into the numerator uh, using some manipulation with the exponents. Uh, then you apply the power rule to this, add 1 to that power, divide by the new power. There's your antiderivative on the left. We're not going to do the we're not going to put a plus c on that side. We're only going to add the constant of integration on the right. Technically, you do need to do a little substitution here to to do that antiderivative. It doesn't really impact you if you overlook it because no new constants come about via the substitution sequence. Uh, but it's it's definitely always good to to do a u substitution in a situation like this because if this were like say a two x in the denominator, our derivative would have been a two, and we would have picked up a one half in this antiderivative. But in this case, we just end up with one over u after going through the substitution sequence. Didn't even really write that on the page here. Uh, so the antiderivative of 1 over u is natural log of the absolute value of u. I back substitute and boom, there's my antiderivative on the right. Add your constant of integration onto that side. You do, because of the way this problem is phrased, you do want to work at solving this equation for y. And so what I did with this side is I just kind of 
uh, did some more manipulation with exponents. I'm not going to solve for y until, until y has a positive exponent on it. So I pushed the y to the bottom of the fraction. Fraction still had a negative value to it. So I changed the left-hand side to look like this. And then if I'm going to solve this for y, I'm, I'm basically treating uh, this right here like a proportion. I'm going to multiply by y, and I'm going to divide by this entire quantity here. And so that's what you see on this next line. I've multiplied the right-hand side by y. I've divided the negative 1 by this entire side. And I want to figure out what C is, right? So I've got this initial condition when X is 2, Y is 3. So I'm putting 2 in for my X. I'm putting 3 in for my Y. And if you work, about, if you work at solving this for C, you might be a little concerned initially about this natural logarithm sitting there. But you end up with 1 inside of it, and the natural log of 1 is 0. So this ends up giving us 3 equals negative 1 over C. And if you multiply the 3 by C, and then divide by 3 to totally solve for C, you get negative 1 third for C, and here is your particular solution.